This video is going to cover UDP hole punching, one of the most genius workarounds to a chicken and egg problem that arises during peer-to-peer -peer communication. Picture this, let's say that this is your computer sitting on your home network. It is connected to your home router, which gives you access to the entire internet. Let's say that somebody sends you a message through a messaging service such as Discord. Discord is an example of a centralized messaging service, meaning that after your friend sends you a Discord message, it goes through a centralized Discord server, and then this Discord server dispatches the message to your computer. This seems like a simple process, but how is the message actually routed from the Discord server to your computer? As with most home networks, your computer has a private IP address, likely beginning with 192.168.x.x. It's common to have multiple devices on a home network, all with private IP addresses within the 192.168 range. All of these IPs are private addresses, meaning that they only hold a scope within a private network. They are not globally unique, and are not used for routing out on the open internet. If the Discord server attempted to relay the message to your private IP address, this would not work, as there could be millions of 192.168 addresses out in the real world, as they're not globally unique IP addresses. So, how do you end up receiving your friend's Discord message? One of the reasons why we use private IPs within home networks is to conserve IP address space, as we're currently running out of IPv4 addresses in the world. There's only 4 billion unique IPv4 addresses available for use globally. Rather than assigning each device within a home network its own globally unique IP address, we only need to use a single unique IP address, known as the public IP address, and assign this to the router. The router now becomes responsible for somehow using a single IP address for any number of devices within its network. So, the Discord server ends up sending the message to your router's public IP, and your router is now responsible for forwarding this message to your specific computer. You might ask, how does the router know which computer to send the message to? The answer is that it doesn't. It's actually impossible to send traffic to a specific private device within a home network. At least not without some interesting solutions. If you've ever hosted a Minecraft server, you're likely familiar with one of these solutions, called port forwarding. You can manually set up a rule on your router, letting it know that if it sees inbound traffic with a specific IP on a specific port, to forward it to a specific device. This works great if you only need to direct specific traffic to a single device, but what if you want to have multiple devices on your network all be available to receive traffic from the same source? It would be quite silly if only a single computer at a time could receive Discord messages. The solution that is most commonly used, that you're likely using right now to receive this video feed, is called NAT, or Network Address Translation. Let's say that you go to search something up on Google. This traffic will contain a source IP address and port number, as well as a destination IP address and port number. When a private device sends a packet out to the internet, the router will swap out the private source IP and port number on the packet, and replace it with the router's own public IP. Most of the time, the port number will remain the same, however it may be incremented if it is already in use. It now simply keeps track of this mapping of private to public IPs and port numbers in something called a NAT table. Once this swap is done, the router will send this traffic out to the internet, and Google will end up sending its return traffic back to the source IP address as normal. When the router receives the return traffic, it will simply look up the IP address and port combination in its NAT table that it previously cached, and will revert back the swap that it made originally swapping the public IP address back to the private IP address before sending it back to the computer that originally generated the traffic. It's quite a simple process, and this is how private networks have worked for quite a while. One implication of using such a system, which you might not have thought of, is that Discord can never just send your computer a message on its own. Your computer first needs to reach out to Discord, asking if there are any new messages for it. This will create a new mapping in the NAT table on the router. This is what enables the Discord server to be able to send return traffic back into the network. This process, where all traffic needs to be initiated from within the network, in order to open up a hole in the network's router, also known as a firewall, is referred to as hole punching, since we're essentially punching a hole to allow return traffic back into the network. 
Without first punching a hole, the firewall would deny all inbound traffic. Now that we established how NATed networks operate, this brings us to the main topic of this video. For centralized services, such as Discord, this system works well. However, what if we wanted to use peer-to-peer -peer communication instead, where your friend can send you a message directly without going through a Discord server in the middle? If both computers are on NATed networks, we run into a problem of the chicken and the egg. Let me explain. In order to get packets flowing between two NATed computers, you have to get each of the two computers to first send a packet to the other one, informing it of which port it punched in its firewall. PCA can only reach PCB on the port that PCB chose to punch into its firewall, and vice versa. The paradox here is that they can't let each other know which port to use, since they can't communicate in the first place. As a result, neither PC is able to send out the initial traffic to open up a hole in its firewall. This is actually quite an interesting problem. If you would like, pause the video and see if you can design a solution to allow the PCs to communicate. An elegant solution to this is something known as UDP hole punching. With UDP hole punching, we introduce a public server known as a registry with a known public IP address. While this looks similar to the previous example, this server has a special purpose and is not used to relay traffic back and forth between the PCs. With UDP hole punching, a peer-to-peer -peer connection is established in two phases, the registration phase and the connection phase. In the registration phase, PCA will reach out to the registration server on an arbitrary port. This causes a hole to be punched into its firewall, allowing inbound traffic to flow into the network and be directed back to PCA. The server takes note of PCA's public IP address and port combination. Both PCs need to go through this process in the registration phase. This means that both firewalls will now have a hole punched through them, and the registration server is aware of what IP and port combinations was punched into each of the firewalls. Of course, the registration server is able to send return traffic back to the PCs. It will let each of the PCs know which IP and port their intended peer is using. The holes that were punched into the firewalls during the registration phase only allows return traffic from the registration server, as the outbound traffic that punched the hole in the first place was destined to the registration server's IP address. Next, during the connection phase, now that the PCs know which public IP and port their intended peer is using, they can simply send some initial traffic directly to their peer, causing a second hole to be punched specifically for return traffic from their intended peer. Because this initial flow of traffic is what punches the hole in the first place, it will be dropped. However, once this hole is punched, the PCs are now free to send subsequent traffic back and forth over the internet without ever going through a centralized server. This traffic will initially be routed to the public IP of one of the routers, at which point the router will forward it to the intended peer as the NAT rule is now in place. Once the registration server does its job, it's no longer needed for the PCs to communicate. That's all there is to it. The two PCs are now set up for peer-to-peer -peer communication without needing to have their traffic go through a server in the middle. Now, you might be asking, why is this called UDP hole punching? What about TCP hole punching? TCP hole punching is possible, it's just a little more complex due to the TCP handshake process. UDP doesn't have a handshake, making the concept easier to understand. In the real world, UDP hole punching tends to be used for use cases that use UDP, such as establishing IPsec tunnels. Hopefully this explanation of UDP hole punching made sense to you. If you like this video, you might be interested in subscribing to the channel and checking out some of my other content. Thanks for watching.